Our next speaker today is also very well known for her voice among several other accomplishments. A celebrated singer, music composer, youth icon, and an independent music producer who is committed to changing the indie music scene with Magnum Opus Productions. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jocelyn Royal. Today as she joins us this afternoon, she will share her views on how creators are getting empowered with the digital revolution and direct consumer connect platforms like YouTube and Instagram. Joining Jocelyn on stage for the fireside chat will be Kunal Kishore, co-founder and director at Value360 Communications and vice president of PRCI. Hi, good evening everyone. Uh, I think before I get started with talking to Jocelyn, I just want to give Jocelyn a trivia. You know, there is one brand which is common between both of us. That is? And we, we both have contributed to the brand. That brand is Paytm. <laughs> if you've heard the voice, Paytm Karo, that's her voice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's first, my jingle, yeah. <laughs> and the first time that I met her, my introduction to her was that she's the Paytm voice and he's the Paytm brand partner. So Jocelyn, um, uh, to begin with, actually, I just wanted to start from your early days. You started your career when you were 18, and you were known to be a, uh, to an artist who were called a single woman band, because you used to play multi, uh, uh, multi instruments together. From that journey to now, doing a multitask job wherein you're just not producer, you're just not compose, composing, you're just not singing, you're also acting into it. Now you're producing a magnum opus. So if you could just tell us about your journey, a small gist of it. Um, hi, everyone. Hi. So um, I always felt like music is my calling. I am not a trained composer or a singer. I've just learned it all on the way. And when you say um, instruments, I was always drawn towards instruments a lot as a kid. And I've, I've just been curious more than anything. And I just follow my gut, follow my calling. And I try to give my 200% to everything. So rest, I don't know. Earlier, your job was easier because you were just singing. And now, I was reading through some of the news articles where you've actually made a statement that you are not going to work with labels, you're going to create your own independent music. So uh, how did you get that uh, feeling and what convinced you that you would not today require a label to support you? You can actually create, and Hire is a great example. We are all singing it right now. We are all humming to it. We are all vibing to it. So what? What and how it changed? When did it change? So, I've always been a bit of a risk taker. I would not advise everybody to do that. <laughs> I remember when I was just finishing college, my friends were going for placements and everything, and I was like, I don't want to do that. I was sitting outside on the steps. And then when I entered the music industry, so I, would, I had approached um, Dharma Productions and Excel Entertainment for a film called Bar Bar Dekho. And I pitched my scratch to them. And I did not have, I barely had money. It was just, you know, just pay for the rent. Think about the auto rides also. Like you can't do multiple meetings, you have to think. And they said we like the song and, um, but we want to see how grand you can make. So I said like, you invest something, you give me the money to make it grand. Um, so it was a, they did not, obviously I was a newcomer and I had to make a choice. Um, should I put all my money right now and not think about the next month's rent or just invest on myself and if I don't believe in myself then no one else will. And then I did that and I got a three song deal with Dharma and Excel Entertainment and the songs were Nach Dene Sare, Kho Gayam Kaha and Peh Gya Khalara from Fukre. So that happened and over the time I realized, I'll be very blunt, that labels can be a bit exploitative. 
बिकॉज आई वॉज गेटिंग अनोइड बाय दिस होल रीमिक्स कल्चर लाइक बिकॉज यूव क्रिएटेड अ सॉन्ग एंड देन समान विल कम चेंज द बीट एड वन कोअकी लाइन और एड वन न्यू वर्ड एंड देल बी लाइक द न्यू कम्पोजर द न्यू लिरिसिस्ट एंड द ओरिजिनल कम्पोजर एंड दे डोंट इवन केयर टू मैंशन दैम आस्क दैम इट्स ऑल्सो बिकॉज लीगली यू नॉट रॉन्ग दे ओन द सॉन्ग्स बट इट्स अ वेरी वन साइडेड गेम लाइक इफ यू हैव गिवन योर सॉन्ग टू अ फिल्म यू डू इट इन गुड फेथ ऑल्सो and it is that it becomes that film song producer song the actor song and the music composers or the lyricists they are taken for granted even like today um the songs if you see on youtube the lyricists are not even mentioned on the youtube title and i was getting frustrated by it but i was like what do i do and then i had a song called heerie everybody told me you're being stupid don't invest so much on a song and uh, give it to a film give it to a label but i was this close to signing the every day i tried i could not i was like it does not feel right i cannot listen to people when i've not listened to them all my life let me take that punt on me on myself and see what happens and and i i am lucky that uh, he re uh, became what it became it became a global top hit it entered all the charts so i couldn't so it's become bigger than any song this year like after um heere became successful i got a lot of calls from labels from films you can give it to us and we will make it bigger i said like but it cannot become bigger than this i believe that so you know there's always some people trying to uh so i want to bring you back to the fact that uh, you've been able to see the power of consumer now because of the advent of digital uh, where you can take your product in the in the brand side there is direct to consumer in the creator side also with the whole content platform that has given you power now you do not need a label to make you reach to a consumer and today if your product is right or your composition your singing your your overall product that you are actually offering to the market is right the platforms allow you to actually make the consumer more powerful than anybody else so what do you have to say as in how do you see this because with with this you've changed your approach and i know that in your journey you are actually looking at building many magnum opus content now and similar to here and it it is only going to go bigger from here so uh, where so how how are things looking different in terms of just monetization so if i may touch we we're not interested in numbers but i would say that a label would have given you a signing amount uh, now that you have taken the uh, song directly to the consumer how it has played up for you because now you own the ip today the song is yours you own the ip all the royalty is coming to you and all the youtube earning is coming to you so how are you seeing this entire change with the overall digital ecosystem boosting direct to consumer approach for people so see because of uh, the platforms being there you have the access to the dashboards you can see your, for yourself how much your content is making what's the reach and uh, the best thing is that you get the creative liberty and the creative freedom to do whatever you want to do with your content and uh, uh you have the ip you want to do different versions of a song of anything you can do it and um like i said like no one can remix your songs without your permission <laughs> uh that's a big thing and even like on spotify on youtube you have the access to see the dashboard and you can see like you know they pay you monthly or yeah. quarterly and the reports come it's very transparent it's not those days like you know people just tell you the song didn't earn enough or you just take this much money and you're done for like owning an ip if it works yeah. it's like it gives you revenue for a lifetime yeah. i i believe the the scale that your song heere has go, gone into uh, for them and i've been hearing from a lot of creators now that how youtube monetization is getting into a gray area 
However, I think for a scale like yours, I think 220 million uh, uh, number of impressions that you've been able to garner on YouTube. Now, that is a scale where I think monetization uh, is always, even if it is uh, slightly lesser in percentage that the creator is getting, it's a large scale of monetization. Uh, do you think uh, you're, are you aiming to up your game from here because you know what you're working on? Uh, and will the, will the production value, because we want to touch upon even the production value, we've all seen the Hiriye song, and the production value looks outstanding. Uh, it is comparable to a Karan Jaws movie. So, so are you going to actually up the, up the game in terms of how you're actually presenting your songs on the platform? And do you see the numbers are going to become bigger from here? So that was the idea. Because when I decided not to do film songs, I thought if I'm going indie, it should not mean it's small. It should be as big or even bigger than a film song because this is my baby. And I want to present it in the biggest way, in the most uh, grand way, like a magnum opus. And, and I think over the... Uh, over, over a few months after the pandemic, we've all realized uh, we all want like that larger than life um, visuals. And and when um, I decided to produce Hiriye on my own, I that was the thought. And now I feel slightly more confident to take bigger risks. So the upcoming projects, obviously, I'm trying to outdo myself here. And... Uh, yeah, I, I, I hope it works. Do we get lucky to get some sneak <laughs> peek on your, on your next one? Uh, so we're just uh, getting ready to drop a very, very big song uh, in the first week of December. Okay. But uh, yeah, that's about it right now, I can tell you. <laughs> okay, so um, I want to touch upon now, you've been doing brand collaboration. Uh, you, uh, with the numbers that you're uh, reaching out, not a lot of brands are now trying to associate with you. Uh, and um, I've been seeing uh, you've been promoting several brands, uh, per se. So how do you see, as in what do you have to say? Because we're here in the room, we have a lot of people who are actually representing brands. If they need to partner with you, what do you see how they should look at evaluating, partnering with a creator who's actually only going to grow in numbers? And will it be a straight jacketed approach where you would want to actually promote a uh, phone like a OnePlus phone that you promoted or it would be an integration that you'll be looking like, like I saw both integrated in your uh, Hiriye song. So what's your view in this and what would be your advice to people like us who are looking to actually look at different partnerships for our brands to reach to a larger consumer? Um, so. I think like brands invest a lot and there are a lot of collaborations with the creators on Instagram and everywhere. And with Hiriye, we collaborated with Boat. And it was a very seamless integration. It did not feel out of place. It uh, got so much visibility. I mean like I don't see an Instagram post combined with a full campaign which can touch 200 million or 220 million views. So um, I... I am assuming Boat is extremely happy. Aman is happy. <laughs> so that's the idea like where we use music videos to um, integrate brands very smoothly and it's like reaches the subconscious of a consumer, um, which I believe is very nicely done in Hiri and that's the plan. A um, lot of people are approaching us and we select like, you know, what the vibe of the brand is. It's not just like, just take any brand for any song. It has to be done very uh, seamlessly. So what a takeaway for us largely is, I think uh, what we are doing right now is we're looking at creating a lot of branded content, but now brand should start to evaluate how we can become part of creator's original content where we can seamlessly integrate uh, our products, which are looking more organic, which can actually reach a larger audience. Uh, truly said, none of the branded content put together, I think thousand of branded content put together, they also would not match up to a 220 million yeah. uh, views that Hiria has got and certainly Boat was very, very visible and was not out of the place. 
what is uh, what are the opportunities that are there like how are you planning now uh, with so many production under your belt uh, i know there are about five that you are actually already working on and all of up all of it largely at a large scale uh, and do you do you see that the brands can actually look at not just integrating product or doing marketing with you uh, in terms of just the content that you are actually building or there is a larger partnership that one can actually look at with creators in general i'm saying that you are right now doing production and then you are also doing a lot of concerts uh, across the cities so how do you see and what is the opportunity that one can people like us can take to our brand partners so like you mentioned i'm on a tour right now so uh, they can be tour sponsors uh, they can be music integration they can be endorsements there's so many things that you can one can do with the brand so and um, just from a perspective of your current uh, your brand partnerships that you have done and largely what are the do's and don'ts that that you keep in mind when you're actually looking out for picking up a partnership when a brands are reaching out to you are you okay to endorse any kind of a brand or or you are selective in terms of what is the partnership that you would want to do no obviously it has to be um it has to go hand in hand the brand should be happy with you and you should be happy with the brand and the messaging and everything and um, for me like i said it has to be really well shot it should not look like you just put that product or that brand just for the sake of it uh, it has to be embedded in your storyline and the video um and sh yeah so that's the idea so from from the branded content perspective now i'm moving back uh to what you've actually experienced in the journey we've seen that uh, celebrities can be uh, having their wedding at different destination but something common that we have actually noticed is the song that they are playing and that the common songs that are getting played is jasleen royal so what is the what is the mantra how are you able to actually create a dil shagna and then ranja yeah. to actually have a flavor which is going through and through from a wedding and will you always be in the sufiana uh, space when you are actually looking at creating your content so see din shagna was out and out a wedding song and uh, when anushka and virat got married to it it kind of went viral but ranja was never supposed to be a wedding wedding song it's just that it just became bigger than the film situation and said and kiara they thought it's like their song you know every couple has a song and um, theirs happened to be ranja and it makes me happy that when a song becomes bigger than the film situation or just a film or you know it just becomes a um, personal like memory of a couple so ranja became a wedding song and then there's a song called sangrayo that was used for hansika motwani's wedding so i am not planning these <laughs> so here here there are there are i i believe there for me my lens is brands and i see that any wedding brand which is focusing on the wedding as a market for them you become a very good market fit and i i feel here what what is a parallel that i wanted to draw and bring this context here is that there are times when you are actually looking at uh, creators from a standpoint of what they are creating but then you have to also look at what are the trends that they are actually are able to draw and then how that trend can become a part of your overall brand journey so when i was just researching about you because uh, as a friend we all know each other but we don't research before coming for this session so is researching about you and i realized that a lot of these songs are getting played during the wedding this thing and i thought why not a raymond ethnic should be looking at partnering with you which is actually now getting into the whole uh, wedding business um, and that that is one space that even the creator should start to actually build on their conversation about on what are the elements that suits like boat makes a natural sense for you because boat is a is is a headset i think boat headset was used in your uh, this thing which is which is goes well with the music 
similarly with the trend side, uh, wedding becomes an important part. So the point, and because we are we're all part of a creator economy where we are trying to actually evaluate on the creator side of it, how do you now see with, uh, with the entire space that you are actually building in, in the independent music space, uh, what are the, and I'm not asking you to actually reveal what you're actually building in, but the kind of formats that you're actually going to work on. And I touched upon the fact that will it be all uh, very similar uh, uh, space, or you will also be hitting the party space where the music would be, right now it's more vibing space, more humming space. So what is, what is your new, uh, what, are the, what, what is on your plate right now? Um, so, I can be like very, very critical about my own work. So I try to do all sorts of songs. Um, if you see Din Shagna or Nach Dene Sare is a full on like Dhol, Punjabi wedding song. Din Shagna is a emotional, is an emotional song. Hire is something like I'd not done before or Ranja for that matter is very different. And, um, I, I promise you, the upcoming songs are completely different from what I've done so far. And uh, that's what actually uh, gives me that kick. How do I keep reinventing myself? Um, what, what new is happening? And uh, getting in inspired by different sounds. That's, that's what excites me. I, I find it very boring to you know, like, just keep doing whatever has worked for me. Like, even Kho Gayam Kaha, when I compose, it's, it's very different from any other song that I've done. So, I consciously decide, try not to be repetitive. But then how do we, how do we as a brand partner reach out and understand that what is next that you're doing uh, that we can be partner with? So, do you have a team? And how do, I, I want to understand, see, a creator like you, and a creator which is a normal creator, they are doing content which is a weekly content. You're doing content which is like four in a year, which requires a lot of homework, a lot of production value. You, you need to actually get talent on board. All of that requires, and then there is a lot of homework that is going on. So do you have a marketing or a, or a team which actually reaches out to uh, potential partners and make them understand what the opportunities, because that is a struggle for us today. When I see and boat was integrated, a, pa a company like Noise could possibly see that why are they not there in in terms of uh, uh, brand integration? So how do we figure out where are these opportunities? Sometimes these opportunities lands on the lap of the brand, uh, but are these proactive by brand persuasion or you have a team who actually pursue to the brand when you have an opportunity open for? the brand integration? Um, so it goes vice versa. Like, I have a team uh, of uh, managers uh, who reach out to brands or the, they send the brand uh, inquiries to us. And in music, we have, like, song scratches. So my next ca year's calendar is already planned. Like, I can see it in front of my eyes. Like, what are my releases in the next few months? So every two, three months, I'm going to be dropping a big song. And uh, so we can play the songs, the scratch version or the draft version to the brand and uh, they can see if they like it and they want to be a part of it. So that's how we can integrate it. But more so from a production like you integrated. So like uh, I remember in the movie integration, product integration space, uh, there are agencies which are reaching out to brand partners, PR partners where they actually give situations and say there are potential opportunities where these kind of brands can integrate. Uh, now you're opening up a new space, uh, a space where you're creating magnum opus content in the space of just the mu independent music. Now again, that creates uh, opportunity uh, for brands to see that these production value that they are getting yeah. at a small cost that they can actually spend to become be part of it. Uh, we have to actually catch up onto the, that game. We need to actually understand because in the movie business, it is a, it is a well-established space where you have agencies which are doing uh, brand integration. So currently, are you working? How are you trying to plan it out? Because it also reduces your cost 
in terms of your own cost of putting the production. So there's also one benefit here that um, the time you'll take to complete and drop the complete video will be lesser. And uh, also the focus is more. It's a three minute song and for and 10, 15 seconds of a brand integration. So it's not like a movie, like three hours and you get five seconds of the visibility. So visibility wise, I feel it's, it's uh, better. And uh, like I said, like I have a team uh, who the brands can write to and we can discuss things and, you know, take it forward. But, uh, from a perspective of, see, uh, uh, right now the next production that you have, you would have this script, right, in place. You would have the script almost uh, in hand, wherein you know what is going to be produced. So one is that we reaching out to your team, asking for a potential opportunity. But if, say for example, if you have an opportunity where uh, a two-wheeler brand uh, can be utilized, how do, how do you outreach to such brands? Do you already doing that outreach or you're expecting team to actually reach out to you? So like I said, it goes both ways. Um, if the concept has a two-wheeler or a car or headphones, so my team will, my team might try to figure it out who the potential partners can be. And uh, also it goes the other way around that the brands reach out to us. Um, it's done by my management. Effectively, team. what I'm trying to draw here is that we are opening up a new space. We, I personally run the creator space where we are seeing that formats are changing. Uh, the way engagement has to happen with the creators need to be relooked. We are actually looking at a very unidirectional approach where we are actually trying to actually take the face, tell them this is the content, you push it on your social media platform, and that's the approach that we are actually following. But going forward, the kind of content that is getting created with the creators, we need to actually start our approach in terms of understanding where we can get them integrated, where we can actually find opportunity to do the integration. And we are, I, I was largely trying to understand that our creators trying to put a, put a process to it. But I think more than creators, I think the brands and the agency partners have to actually start doing these, these kind of uh, understanding in terms of how, because I've already started seeing transitioning of such, not only on the music space, I've started to see that how uh, there are uh, adventure junkie uh, or people who are doing a long trip to a London and these are all uh, um, uh, influencers who are creating content on the space of automobile or long road drive. They're reaching out to the partners to come in and do a brand integration there. So those kind of integration I do believe will last and have a long lasting impact to the brand because these are not branded content, these have organic reach, they are not restricted in terms of their reach that they are actually uh, providing. Uh, coming back uh, on to your journey, uh, uh, Jocelyn, uh, when you started, you were 18 year old, uh, and now that you are getting into the, uh, the entire business of uh, production, how easy or difficult it is, because I, I feel that you, right now, you've not got the uh, credit of the songs that have actually gone on to become what it is. Now with Hiri, I think the, the world is waking up to you suddenly uh, in terms of uh, understanding the kind of composition that you are actually doing. So currently, and I, I felt a lot of, how would I say, a rebe rebel when I was talking to you in terms of how you are approaching now your career. Yeah. And, uh, and with this rebel behavior, I also felt that there is a plan. It's not as if you walked out of the room and say that I do not want to work with the world without a plan. You have a plan, you've executed one very successfully. So how, and you were talking about the fact that even during the COVID time, you realized how the content is actually moving on the digital space side of it. So uh, take us through that journey in terms of how that entire journey started where you actually uh, said that, okay, let me take a plan and let me move ahead with a plan that I want. So I started with a very small production. Uh, there's a song called Sangrayo, which I 
uh, shot during the pandemic and it was not on a very, very large scale, but it was a very heartfelt production video. It was, the crew was just us friends and Ranveer Alabadia um, featured in it. And I was just trying to understand how to market it better, how to uh, make my video reach more people, but I did not have a lot of budget then. So it just happened, like a lot of my songs have grown over time, like uh, Din Shakna took four years, Ho Gai Am Kaha took three years to become what it became. And uh, Sangrayo also took like kind of two years to start trending and I, and it just gave me a lot of confidence that, you know, just concentrate making on good, doing your 100%, try to make good songs, try to be honest and a song will have its own destiny. So that's how when Sangrayo started doing well, so I thought let me shift gears now and that's how, and also the whole um, problem with the labels, um, not giving you royalties or uh, not giving you any ownership of the song that you've created. Overnight it has changed, the credits are changed. So I just thought I want to take things in my hands. I want to, um, I don't know, like I can't just sit and crib. I want to do, like, turn things around and that's how. So was Hiri, Hiri was an outcome of you moving away from the label or you created Hiri, you realized it is going to be what it is and then you said, let me now take this route. So I had Hiri since a long time and there was a time when a film wanted to take it and then the, the lab, a label wanted to release it but like I said, I was this close to signing it and I couldn't do it because it, it was not fair, it's not fair to the artists, how labels work. Um, I've, I hope for a small change that the artists get some revenue, some ownership, the first right of refusal, even on the old songs, if they are alive, that, you know, we don't want to remix it, you may go ahead. I have also been given an opportunity to recreate a, an old song which is like a gem of a song and uh, it's very tempting obviously to you know just own a song that you've loved but then I was like it's, it does not make sense so I reached out to the composer of that song and I said like listen the, these uh, people want to recreate your song and they've asked me but uh, I think you should be doing it and uh, so I kind of declined it but I tried to do the right thing. Um, so that's the idea, like... So your trigger point was about the fact that how currently the actual composer, singer, today doesn't have a right and suddenly label can actually decide in the direction that they want yeah, to. And that, and once I saw like this, the, the actors' names were mentioned and it said, this person, this actor's and this female actor's album I was like, no, yeah, come on, it's it's not right. It's the singers, composers, and the lyricists' album first. That's the world we are living in. <laughs> Somebody who's who who is the face. Even sometimes, uh, in the organization, there are people who are working in the background, and then there are people who are who are representing that organization. Sometimes that organization get to be known by the by the faces, but there are a lot of people behind it, and I. I can understand uh, what you what you felt when you actually started to move in that direction. Now we we left with very little time. Uh, one of my team member requested that I should request you for a small uh, hiri uh, humming for us, okay. and this is I'm doing for you. <laughs> mm. So everybody, you gotta sing with me. Are you ready? I don't know if the mic huh? is is friendly with singing. I think there are different kind of mics, but yeah. Teri <laughs> <laughs> 
होके मारा जिंद जान करा हीरिए हीरिए आ सिंग विद मी हीरिए 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 आ वन मोर टाइम तेरी होके मारा जिंद जान करा तेरी होके मारा जिंद जान करा हीरिए हीरिए आरिए हीरिए थैंक यू थैंक यू आई वुड ओपन द फ्लोर फॉर क्वेश्चन पीपल हु वुड वॉन्ट टू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम जसलीन हाई हाई जसलीन अंशुमन दिस साइड I wanted to ask you about the question that you have seen a lot of songs going on trending on reels, and then people go and watch the entire video. So, uh, since you have gone independent and you are planning to make your own music, do you keep that in mind that I should make a song that goes on trending, and uh, people generally make a video on it, so that my song gets more and more reach organically? Um. So. not really like i don't think about the instagram trend but what instagram trending reels has done to me is like i come across so many beautiful songs you know sometimes an old song which everybody had forgotten is now trending and some part of it that only you thought you like but now you know the whole world whole world likes it so that's how like i approach it i feel that i come across so many different artists so many independent artists uh, different voices that i want to collaborate with uh, that's the approach but i don't think you know just let's try to make that 30 second hook which is going to trend and make the song go viral it's the other way around good question i think artist can get tempted with this whole trending uh, approach where they can actually look out creating something trending but it is it is almost like how brand says come come up with a campaign idea which can go viral yeah. and yeah. you can't plan virality of a campaign yeah you can't plan even if you see like a lot of instrumental themes go viral uh, which otherwise you would not even you know think too much about but i love it like because i love themes so much and i like the fact that instagram now people pick it up and uh, you can like i've seen singers Sing those themes at concerts, and everybody is humming along, and I, I think that's beautiful. No, and it's huge. I think uh, I saw on your Instagram handle, you celebrated one million reels. So one is, you have two forty-two million views. That's a different. It's a it's it's a passive passive consumption of a content. One million people, if they have actually created reels around your song, that means active engagement with your content. They have actually picked up the content and created. that's a huge rush that any creator will get so every creator and i would like to add to her answer every creator wants to get onto a instagram trend but they can't predict they can't possibly create content even a brand cannot possibly create a advertising which can go viral they can actually create a good content possibility of virality can be there but it can't be predicted i i have a question yeah, uh, hi hi Uh, so when you create content and this question actually is for both of you because both of you are experts in uh, you know influencer content creation so when you create content for a brand do you think there is a risk that the creator or the creation itself may get more viral than the brand and the brand may somewhere get lost in the entire creation do you think there is a risk that exists or, or how do you work around that sometimes the campaign itself becomes bigger than the brand uh, and and if you'll try to recollect on the campaign that which brand the campaign uh, was made for it, you'll take some time you'll be able to register it but i always feel that if, if your content has gone viral if your content becomes bigger uh, you would have a very good impact because brand recollection will take some time but there will be a reference point for this like i i think content which are and virality wise i feel we all know that humorous relatable and uh, any which any content which is uh, thought provoking which is which 
could possibly question uh, the set norms go potentially goes viral potentially they are relatable relatable content you share funny content you share and something which is bold content you all want to actually share and uh, talk about it and lot of such content like you have if you remember tata t's jagore campaign it is relatable it it is a self awakening campaign it has gone bigger than the brand itself but we all remember that it started e campaign you can add to it no no i think he's answered it all um when i'm creating for a brand all i care about is um uh, how the brand uh, wants to be uh, seen like for example when i did paytm karo uh, so i just was working on a brief and i was trying to do my best to make a very catchy jingle and do justice to the visuals to the messaging of the brand and that's the intent like i approached the jingle in a very honest way as when i do my other songs so maybe that's why it just kind of went viral yeah <laughs> i think that'll be all thank you jasleen for taking out time i think uh, it is special for our industry and i know that you are in in the middle of many tour that you are actually doing and you're going for another event so thank you for making this time out in the short notice of request that i gave you Uh, no, no, thank I'm, you so yeah. much for having me here and it was very very um insightful and enriching to be talking to you about so many things that i just realized while talking to you uh, so thanks a lot and pleasure being here